Join Wondery Plus to listen to True Love one week early and ad-free in the Wondery app. Download the Wondery app in your Apple or Google Play mobile app store today. A quick note that this episode contains some adult language. Wondery. The Capitol building in Washington, D.C. is supposed to be this iconic symbol of the American people and democracy, the meeting place of great legislators across the country. You'd never know it today. A sea of flashes bursts before my eyes. Between that and the sun, I can hardly see. The imposing white entrance is crammed with reporters, and all of them want to talk to me. It reminds me of the early Pure Tea conventions when I was the Wonderkin CEO who was going to change the world, a role model for every young girl in the country. But they're not here today to ask me questions about my invention or to fawn over all I've accomplished in such a short time. They're here to destroy me. Please, let her through. We'll have comments when the session ends. The congressional hearing room is smaller than the ones you see on TV. At least this one is. There are congressmen sitting behind dais, faces bored, entitled. I'm sitting below them at a small wooden table. You weren't informed of the significant problems with your device, that using it could endanger human lives. No surprise the senator from Missouri is the first one to speak. He got 100000 campaign dollars from the water filtration lobby. But that's not something I'm allowed to mention today. He's not in the spotlight. I am. Sir, I'm aware of the seriousness of the situation, but I didn't see every test result. Did your chief operating officer, Jean-Claude Ferdinand, communicate the results to you? We've heard testimony that you were close. It didn't take long for this guy to bring up Jean's name. He wants to see how I react, especially since Jean is here today watching me with fear in his eyes. I know what the senator thinks. It's what everyone thinks. A naive college student and the son of a multimillionaire pretending to be visionaries. But when I think of the two of us, I remember the touches, the glances, the way it felt so right by his side. Ms. Washington, please answer the question. Were you and Mr. Ferdinand close? My lawyer said to make my answer short and sweet, fewer chances to blurt out incriminating information. Yes, we were close business associates. Well, Ms. Washington, it turns out we have someone here who may shed more light on your business practices and your relationship with Mr. Ferdinand than you seem willing to do. I hear someone enter the chamber behind me. I don't dare turn around. My lawyer rests his hand on my shoulder and slides me a note. It says, remember the cameras, don't react. I peek over my shoulder. Shit. My stomach drops. Amanda, we haven't spoken since the offices were raided. She looks nothing like the person I fired. She's dressed like the chic executive I used to be, in a black pantsuit with Louboutin heels. And then there's the look on her face, determined, angry. She strides past me with a clenched jaw, avoiding eye contact. We used to be best friends. And as much as that kills me, it's nothing like the disappointed look on Jean's face. We shared so much more than just a business. But if today goes like my lawyer thinks it's going to go, the next thing we'll be sharing is a jail cell. Wondery's new investigative podcast miniseries, Harsh Reality, digs into the -the behind-the-scenes drama of one of the most controversial reality TV disasters of all time. It's a story of love, lies, and reality television. To hear the whole story, follow Harsh Reality, the story of Miriam Rivera, on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or wherever you're listening right now. Hey, I'm Cassie DePeckle, the host of Wondery's Against the Odds. In our next season, a group of American rock climbers will have to fight for their freedom after being taken captive by rebel militants in the remote mountains of Kyrgyzstan. Follow Against the Odds on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or wherever you're listening now. From Wondery, I'm Amber Rashawn Williams. And I'm Justin Walker-White. And this is True Love. Each week, we bring you scandalous stories of love, lust, and heartbreak. Inspired by the headlines and retold with our own spin. This is our four-part series called Dirty Water. And this is episode one, Purity. It's another hot-ass D.C. summer. I grew up here, but even I'm surprised it's still so muggy the first week of my senior year at Howard University. In one year, I'll be sitting in front of legislators trying to explain the choices in my life and where everything went wrong. But right now, my future looks rosy. Besides, I didn't pick Howard for the weather. If I wanted decent temperatures, I could have gone to Stanford. No, I picked Howard because I wanted the HBCU experience. I'm experiencing a swamp forming underneath my t-shirt right now. No comment. That's Amanda, my best friend. Amanda's a big brain that wears big brain clothes, an oversized t-shirt with matching oversized jeans. She reminds me of Cree Summer from a different world, a neurotic class president type with fabulous hair and no sense of style. 
If you put as much time into your classes as you do your wardrobe, you might be able to keep your scholarship. My scholarship is fine. Remember the trash trap I designed for the Anacostia River? It won awards. My professors love me. Personality is not going to help you graduate. And that was two years ago. You've got to get into the habit of finishing the things you start. I hear you, but this year's going to be different. I'm calling it my year of finishing things. In D.C., protests pop up by the hour. Yesterday, there was some dude protesting in front of the Cheetah Club because girls get in free. But this one looks different. Picket signs bob up and down. There's a man shouting. Behind him, a crowd is building up like water behind a dam. What's all this about? Check out the homemade signs. Water is a human right. Oh, yeah! This is the building with the polluted water. Assholes. A little girl sits by a crumbling stoop, baking in the summer sun. Her t-shirt and shorts are dark with sweat. I dig out a water bottle from my bag. Here you go. She smiles like I just gave her a bag of candy. Amanda pulls me away. Come on, Jasmine, we gotta go. You know what kills me? If this was happening where all the rich white people lived, they'd bring the entire ocean to them. The ocean is all salt water. I'm just saying, no one's gonna save us. We gotta save ourselves. Across the street is Gentrification Tower. That's my nickname for it. It's a brand new four-story glass building with a doorman. A young white dude in a starched collared shirt and khakis walks down the front steps, drinking from a designer water bottle. It's probably filled with fresh tap water, as clean as his clothes. It's not fair. Everyone should have access to clean water. It gets me angry. And it gets me thinking. Hey, Amanda, do you think we can make a device that can tell people right away if their water is contaminated? Like a Brita filter with information readouts? Much smaller than that, like cheap, mass market, something affordable. Girl, you're a dreamer, and this is definitely not the first step to a project you can finish in this lifetime. How are we going to just invent something like that ourselves? Come on, Amanda, you're one of the smartest people I know. If we put our heads together, we could come up with a great prototype. So before you say no, if I can get us access to the engineering lab, just a spitball, would you be down? Okay, enough, stop. Yes, I'll help. If only to get that dumb idea out of your head. But Jasmine, if you don't pass that biochem midterm of yours, there's no way you're convincing anyone to give you lab time. I'm going to score it how I keep it, a (laughs) hundred. Except, if I was really keeping it a hundred, I'd be able to admit that Amanda's right. I do have a lot of ideas that I'd never follow through on. But this one's different. The type of water filtration device I'm envisioning could give access to clean water to everybody in D.C., like that little girl. Of course, I have no idea how I'm going to do it, but that's never gotten in my way. I have my own personal mantra. If I build it, they will come. Global Reach is one of the biggest VC firms on the planet, and even its elevator bay is intimidating. All marble floors and black onyx walls with climbing plants snaking up the sides. This is my last chance to raise money to get my latest idea off the ground. An all-in-one travel app called Ready, Jet Set, Go. I gave myself a pep talk this morning and even did a whole guided meditation thing, but I still feel like I want to throw up. The VCs at Global Reach don't know I left the Ferdinand Industries to go out on my own. All they know is that I'm the son of Guy Ferdinand, king of the restaurant franchise dynasty. I know I got this meeting because of my last name and my father's track record, but I'll take any open door I can. They're waiting for you in the conference room. The receptionist points to a glass enclosed office suite that reminds me of an aquarium. The hungry sharks are already gathered around a boardroom table. Okay, Jean-Claude, you know how to do this. Just breathe. Morning! Thank you so much for agreeing to meet with me. I think I code-switched a little too hard there. The CEO is staring at me like I'm a ventriloquist. Mr. Ferdinand, come on in. What can we do for you? I'm here to offer you the opportunity of a lifetime. I sound like a used car salesman. Try again. Gentlemen, let me present to you my proprietary app for the modern traveler. I pull out my mini iPad from my suit jacket and show them the full deck. I use my last dollar on this presentation, and it's brilliant. With one click, you can have dinner, gifts, a masseuse, all sent to your hotel room by the time you land. Okay, this is good. I'm in a groove. I can see some of the execs nodding along. Hmm, I like the logo. The bird is cute. Stands out. That's the Trogon, the national bird of Haiti. Where are you in the development process? Well, I have a demo and a launch plan. I'm looking for $2 million in seed money to start. The idea is to launch a beta fast and get this out there. Which hotels or airlines have you signed up? Well, uh, none yet. That's all in the scaling plan on page 16. Mm Mm-hmm. Who's on the team? Who's your COO? Uh, Well, it's it's just me right now, actually. What advisors do you have? It's just me. You know that expression, never let them see you sweat? Too late. A sheen has formed on my forehead and dark stains are spreading under my shirt. Look, I can put together an executive team in no time. I've done it before. This is a strong idea with potential for wide adoption. The quiet suit in the corner cocks an eyebrow and leans back into his chair. I've heard this idea 100 times in one form or another. The all-in-one travel app. This isn't unique. Not unique. 
the kiss of death in the VC world. And with that, the meeting is over. The CEO holds open the door. Thanks for coming in. We'll get back to you. Love the conch stew at your dad's restaurant, by the way. I launched the delivery app for Griot to go, which is the only reason these suits on K Streets even know how dope Haitian food is. You're missing out on the opportunity of a lifetime. And there's that car salesman again. Damn it. Sorry, Jean-Claude. The travel space is oversaturated. When you find a potential unicorn you can partner up with, you know, like a Zuckerberg or Steve Jobs type, get back to us. Doors always open for a Ferdinand. And there lies the rub. A unicorn comes along once in a lifetime. About as often as an immigrant coming to America and being met by streets paved with gold. But my family managed to come here and build a business. Now it's my turn to prove I can do it too. On my own. So yeah, believe me. If I knew where to find a unicorn, I'd grab onto its horn and never let go. You know that moment when you haven't studied for a test and you start to panic right before it starts? And then you realize you know all the answers and you feel a wave of relief? <laughs> yeah, well, this is not one of those moments. I've been so caught up with pure tea that I barely left my room, including going to class. My biochem professor, Dr. Susan Richards, is one of the most respected professors at Howard. Before I even applied to this university, I saw Dr. Richards give a lecture on water insecurity on C-SPAN and knew I wanted her as my faculty advisor. If there's one professor here that will understand what I'm trying to do, it's her. Excuse me, Dr. Richards, you have a few minutes? Jasmine, I'm surprised you actually came to class. Dr. Richards is one of those really put together people. Dark colored wrapped dresses, not a hair out of place in her box braided updo. It's intimidating, especially because she has a point. It's true, I have missed a few of her classes. Okay, maybe more than a few, but it's no disrespect to the hallowed halls of learning. I just think that a meaningful invention is better than sitting in a classroom like a robot and being awarded the first letter of the alphabet. I'm sorry about the absences, but I've been working on a device that could help people endangered by the city's old water pipes. We need to discuss something more important. Take a seat. More important than an idea that could help save the lives of future generations? <laughs> I gotta hear this. Jasmine, the school feels that you're no longer making satisfactory academic progress. They decided to place you on academic probation until you can bring your grades up. And because this is the second time this has happened, we'll also be rescinding your Alice Ball scholarship. What? It's the middle of the first semester! I tried to keep you off probation last semester, but this year you didn't even come to the first three classes of my seminar, and you didn't even take the midterm. I had no choice. I had to report you to the school. Dr. Richards, I want you to know that I'm going to do whatever it takes to get back on track here. I've always felt you had a lot to offer. I just don't know why you squander your talents. I'm sorry, Jasmine. There's nothing more I can do here. If I invent a device that saves families from ingesting poisoned water, they'll have no choice but to give me a degree, right? Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg, none of them graduated college. What they did was identify a need in the world, put their feet straight forward and walk into the history books. I just need connections to the tech world if I want to make my water filtration idea a reality. When my father's restaurant chain took off, he leased an entire floor in the Baxter, one of DC's most luxurious towers. I still get a kick out of seeing the big golden F for Ferdinand Industries in the main lobby. I love how the offices look like they could be located in Haiti with red and blue flag colors on the walls and bright green hibiscus plants flown in straight from Port-au-Prince. My older brother Jude is waiting for me in the conference room, wearing his casual Friday look. Blazer, creased jeans, and loafers with no socks. Hey, brother. Jude has a big corner office, and according to my father, he's earned it. I used to have an office here, but it's been empty ever since I struck out on my own six months ago. I was surprised you called. Mom and Dad say hi. They're at the golf club right now. No, they didn't. Okay, no, they didn't. I'm not very close with my parents these days. They were offended when I told them I didn't want to stay in the family business. They thought I was saying I was too good for the restaurant industry, which isn't true. It's just not for me. So now family dinners are mostly just grunts and pointing at food to pass. How's the entrepreneur coaching slash startup business? It's up and down. Gotta say, I admire your courage. That life's too risky for me. Like throwing darts at a money board with your eyes closed. Who knows when it's going to hit, right? Give me the corporate nine to five any day. It's definitely a shock to the system, but I needed it. And my social media accounts are killing it. My voice went up at the end when I said that. How can I honestly say I'm doing well when I haven't closed one damn deal yet? You still paying for Instagram followers? I paid in the beginning just to get started. It's all organic now. Ugh. Dude knows how to push my buttons. He's Mr. Success in the family while I'm Mr. Failure to launch. He seems to forget the delivery app was my idea and I got it off the ground. Dude just did the press. Dad said he wasn't as awkward. What he meant was Jude doesn't get brow sweats when people ask him hard questions. Now everyone thinks Jude is the brains behind Griot to go. Jude, we don't have to do this small talk. I, I, I'll get to the point. I need a loan. I'm being evicted from my office. Jude shakes his head and sits back in his chair. It's his way of saying, I told you so. 
That office was always way too expensive. I told you it was a dumb idea. Come on, Jude, just a few thousand. I'll pay you back when I get this new app off the ground. Jean, I respect that you want to make something of yourself on your own, but you're not really on your own if your brother keeps giving you money, are you? Seriously, Jude, you're acting like you're some kind of self-made man who grew up in a foster home. Man, we had three nannies. Little Wayne performed at your fifth birthday party. Well, at least I did something with my head start. I'm not giving you any money, but I'll be rooting for you, bro. Trust me, this is for your own good. Jude gives me two condescending pats on the shoulder and walks out of the conference room. I'm batting over for two today. Besides, how would you know what's for my own good? Mom still picks out his suits. He has no clue what I'm trying to do or what I need. And what I need right now is an infusion of money. The head of the VC firm I saw this morning said I needed to find a unicorn, and he's got a poem. I just need to use the right carrot. Uh, no, this is dumb. I've been sitting here in my tiny dorm room staring at my phone for the last hour. I know I need to tell my dad I lost my scholarship, but the thought of it makes me want to curl up into a ball. A man has been trying to talk me down like a hostage negotiator. Just call him. Maybe his response will surprise you. My dad is just ones and zeros, binary, inflexible. Amanda, he's going to kill me. Amanda tries to distract me with a video on her phone. <laughs> oh, God, Jazz, these motivational dudes are so full of it. Take a look at this. She hands me her phone. On her screen is a guy who looks like a poor man's Vin Diesel. If you're self-motivated, a little procrastination can help boost your creativity and access new solutions. I bet that guy is richer than the two of us put together. He's got close to like a million followers. All bots. <laughs> you're such a cynic. You gotta dream big, girl. Hand that over. I scroll deeper into the Instagram feed that meme came from. It's not my usual thing. Mostly Bentleys and models sipping champagne with a you can have this too message. But beyond the stacks of cash, I pull up the gram of a young black dude in a fitted cream-colored Armani suit. He's not like those shirtless guys on a yacht, but I can see this dude takes care of himself. Take a look at this guy. Hi, I'm Jean-Claude Ferdinand. If there's one thing I've learned, it's that a good idea comes along once in a lifetime. So I'm looking for an individual, that special person that's got the drive, the persistence, and more importantly, the brain to take your idea to the next level. If you're that one in a million talent I'm looking for, send me a DM. Look at his profile, Jean-Claude Ferdinand. He's the son of Guy Ferdinand from that huge restaurant group. And it says he has an executive coaching certificate from Wharton. Fuck it, I'm sending him a DM. Maybe he has some good advice to share from one budding entrepreneur to another. Here goes nothing. I'm starting a new tech venture. It's gonna change the world. Wanna change it with me? Guada. Was that too desperate? Cheesy, maybe? But the truth is, I am desperate. I'm on the verge of getting kicked out of school, so what do I have to lose? As much as I like to complain about these mandatory Sunday family dinners, I'll never say no to my mother's home cooking. If you've ever had legum, tasso, or my favorite, grill, a citrus pork, you'd be dreaming about this food, too. And best of all, I get to see my little sister, Elaine. You're late. I got to take it from you, too. Hey, I'm hungry, and Mom always makes us wait. In the meantime, I've been cleaning up your Instagram page. Elaine may be 17, but she's my social media guru. She's also my secret weapon. She's been running my Instagram page for the past year, and since then, my follower count has gone up to like, hmm, 840,000. She's killing it. She takes my hand and walks me through the house we grew up in. But let me be real. We grew up in a mansion. At 10,000 square feet, we've got the biggest house on the block, which is saying something for a Haitian family that started out with nothing. It's something my dad reminds me of every single chance he gets. You're lit, Jean-Claude. Sorry, Dad. He sits at the head of our long dinner table like King Jaffe, and he's about to banish me just for being five minutes late. Sit. Food's getting cold. Jude and my mother are already at the table. Me and my sister sit down across from him. Last week, John got a few hundred followers. I've set his account so that he automatically follows everyone back too. That way they stay engaged. Do the followers equal dollars? Because earlier in the week, he was coming to Jude for money. <laughs> his videos will eventually pay off, Dad. Elaine, you're wasting your time. The only reason Jean hasn't teach you up for money yet is because you're still in high school. That's not true. I was planning on asking her for money after dinner. I look at my mom. She's always been the most understanding when it comes to me and my problems. She thinks the cure is simply to get married. And that's a hard pass for me. John claude you look so skinny. Don't worry, Mom. As soon as I hit 30, you'll be telling me that I need to lose weight. And Dad, I only asked you for a few thousand so I can set up my business the right way. He should not fund your frivolous adventures. Nothing I'm doing is frivolous, Dad. People are making millions on social media. I know what I'm doing. Hey, Jean-Claude, Booty Master 3000 just started following you. Uh, thanks, Elaine. Your Instagram channel might woo some naive, unsuspecting people desperate for your so-called advice, but it won't pay your bills. 
You tried, but it's time to come back to the family business. Excuse me, I need some air. Why does my dad know the exact right thing to say that'll cut me down to my core? He's been doing this to me for years. As I head towards the backyard, I can't help wondering. What if he's right? Elaine follows me into the backyard. Nothing's changed in my parents' backyard since I lived here. Pristine lawn, Olympic-sized pool, and a sea of Grecian statues dot in the landscape. They were left by the last owners and my mother found them elegant and regal. But having a bunch of statues of naked guys on your lawn is anything but classy, if you ask me. That is such a hard ass. You're lucky. You only known him for 17 years. And for a good chunk of that time, you were a baby. I'll have you know that I have perfect recall. He annoyed me even when I didn't know how to talk yet. <laughs> <laughs> I take out a cigarette from my jacket and light it up. I rarely smoke, but when my nerves are frayed like this, I can't help myself. John, you can't smoke out here? Relax. Dad still thinks it's the neighbor who smokes. Do you want me to talk to Dad? You know, do the daddy's little girl bit. I bet I can sweet talk him into giving you something, even if it's just time. Nah, you're not cute enough anymore. <laughs> Man, these notifications are driving me insane. I reach into my pocket and fumble trying to turn off my annoying goddamn phone. Helene takes it from me before I slam it to the ground. Here, give me that. You got a message on Instagram. Just deactivate the account. It's pointless. No way. It could be business. You got a message from a woman. You actually have three messages from her. She seems really interested and impressed. Let me see. I grab the phone from Elaine. It's a message from a Jasmine Washington. Her profile shows a young woman wearing jean overalls and a white t-shirt. I think she's going for an ironic 90s look, but it works on her. Like a young Janet Jackson. Wow, she even sent a video. Jean-Claude, I've been watching your videos for a while now, and man, you are the truth. I'm a student at Howard, and I believe, no, I know I got the next billion dollar idea. Now, maybe I'm full of shit, but can you afford not to take that chance? She's interesting. I'm going to message her and see if we can meet tonight. Uh, no, you're not. It's not Tinder. This is business. And businessmen like you don't call right back. It reeks of desperation. Invited to brunch tomorrow. And at brunch, you'll be dressed like the man I've been trying to create. Yeah, that's the move. Jean-Claude, I haven't been doing all of this for you because I'm a dope little sister, even though I am. I'm helping you because I believe in you. Elaine gives me a hug. The kind I should be getting from my parents right now. Strange how this 17-year-old has the power to fill me with more confidence and self-worth than 10 Tony Robbins self-help videos. Now all I have to do is go to this meeting and pretend that I'm not the one who's nervous. I don't really have any real business attire in my wardrobe. College hoodies and leggings are my daily uniform of choice. Practical and comfortable. But when Jean-Claude asked me to meet him for brunch at the Lafayette Cafe, I dug into Amanda's closet and pulled out a beautiful pinstripe pantsuit. Normally I'd ask permission to borrow it, but there wasn't enough time. Jean-Claude is waiting, and I'm already running five minutes late. I spot Jean-Claude immediately. He's sitting at an outdoor table, scrolling through his phone. Funny, he's not as flashy as he seemed online. No Rolex to be seen. Just relaxed and comfortable in his own skin. When Jean-Claude sees me, he stands up and pulls out a chair for me. Let me get that. Thanks. Let me start by saying I love your channel. I, I scrolled through it for hours the other day. You're really impressive. <coughs> My sister will appreciate that. She designed it, and she's only 17. I hate to admit it, but I'm a little nervous. It feels like I'm meeting a celebrity. It's so childish. I only know him from Instagram and I'm already getting butterflies. So, uh, tell me about your revolutionary idea. Yes, um, I'm developing a filter that can purify DC's water in the most underserved and neglected communities. The ones experiencing environmental and systemic racism firsthand. I want to make this filter cheap enough so it's available for all and easy enough for a five-year-old to use. That's a noble idea. What makes you the person that can execute this? I'm at the top of my class in chemistry at Howard. I've been winning STEM competitions since I had braces. I say I'm uniquely qualified to solve this. The part about me being at the top of my chem class is a bit of a stretch, but it's true for Amanda. I'm sure she won't mind if I borrowed a few of her accolades. We're collaborators after all. So is this a product or a cause? Um, both, I guess. Uh, that's the problem. It can't be both. Why? Because a product is a thing. Something I can pick up, hold in my hands. A cause is intangible, too high-minded. I know a lot of people who went broke trying to market a cause. Damn, he makes a good point. He may not be sold on me, but I am sold on him. Isn't that the winning combo? A product that fixes an issue? Today it's DC, but tomorrow it can be Somalia or anywhere there's water insecurity. This device can help save lives. It's a nice idea, but there's no flash to sell to investors. Investors want to know how you'll make a return on their investment. Listen to the name I came up with. Pure tea is like purity. 
Our mission is to cleanse our world of environmental injustice, to create a global movement that can eradicate dysentery, malaria, metal poisoning. The list goes on and on. This device has Nobel Peace Prize written all over it. How can you pass that up? <laughs> ja- Jasmine, don't let my nose stop you. Here's an idea. Put a tech layer on pure tea and that'll earn it a second look. He gets up and gives me a handshake. This meeting is clearly over. Thanks for your time. Shit. I totally misjudged my abilities to pitch to someone like Jean-Claude Ferdinand. This isn't as easy as it looks in all those YouTube startup tutorials I watched. Maybe there's still time for me to beg for my scholarship back. Every Sunday, I go to my parents' house to escape. It's always been my safe place. Where I go when my social life is too overwhelming or when my laundry has piled up too high at school. Well, now it's Sunday, and I have been avoiding this house like it's got airborne Ebola. Sooner or later, they're going to find out I'm on academic probation and lost my scholarship. I need to get ahead of the news before they find out and go nuclear. Mom? Dad, I'm home! My mother comes walking out of the kitchen in her famous I'll Never Wash It cooking apron. Jasmine, you're home just in time for dinner. Eating is the last thing I want to do right now. My dad motions for me to join him at the dinner table. He sits in front of a fireplace mantle filled with old family photos. My first birthday party, my awkward sixth grade class photo, my mom and her black graduation cap from Howard. We were barely middle class, but I love this house. Hmm, I sure am going to miss this place when my father kills me. Everything looks so good, Mom. Could you pass the sweet potatoes and the butter? Oh, and I just got on academic probation and they're taking away my scholarship at Howard. The sweet potatoes stay right where they are. My mom drops her fork on her plate. We're in uncharted waters now. What in God's name are you talking about? It wasn't my fault. It's not even about my grades, per se. You're joking, right? No, this isn't a prank. But before you both lose it, I have a plan. Do you plan on robbing a bank? No, I I have a business. And there's this really big business person from the Ferdinand family. He's sort of interested in what I'm doing. Okay, even I didn't believe what I just said. But it was the only excuse I could think of to stop my father's head from exploding. So do it after you graduate. That'll be too late. Everything's happening now. Some of the world's billionaires never finished school. Like Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, and Steve Jobs. None of those men lived in this house. That's what it's like standing up to my father. In other families, this would have gone way different. Like, sure, Becky, take a gap year to find yourself. We'll pay for you to backpack through Europe. Or, oh, you want to start a business? I'll dip into my 401k or take out another mortgage to invest in you. Not this family. You know the rules of this house. No school, no job, no shelter. Go ahead and quit school, but you can't stay here. But I still need a place to live. Not my problem. Leave the keys, take the sweet potatoes. I wish I could run up the stairs to my old bedroom with the flowery wallpaper. But seeing my dad's clenched teeth, I know it's not an option. I officially have nothing left but my dreams. But if there's one thing I remember about Jean-Claude's videos, it's that persistence is crucial to realizing one's dreams. Maybe this is the universe testing my resolve. Fine, I'm ready. Just as long as the universe grades on a curve. I told Jasmine if she came up with something flashy to ring me. She rang. I owe her at least a listen. Jasmine taps my shoulder and I turn to see her in yoga pants and a crop top. Big change from the pinstripe business suit she wore last time. She's pretty for sure, but I hope she's not using her looks to sway me. Let's hear what she has to say. So, what's changed since last time? I came up with an angle that'll really convince you and make a lot of money. You had me at money. She takes out a straw and spins it around like a baton. What are you selling milkshakes now? The straw is the filter. I don't get it. The straw will filter out dangerous contaminants and the app will track its results. Think of it as an eye straw. You can track everything you drink. We'll collect and sell the data. Jasmine hands me some design drawings thinking I'm going to be impressed by this Brita knockoff. I take my time to look it over. Sure, there's been some thought put into the design, but will it actually work? I'm sorry, I just don't see it. It's too simplistic. If people really wanted something like this, someone would have invented it already. Jasmine points to my phone on the table. Do a quick Insta story to see. I'm not doing that. Look, you have a good idea, but it's not for me. She snatches my phone off the table and opens my Instagram. I stumble to stop her, but find my hands on her bare waist. Hey, get that back. (laughs) She starts to record. Hey guys, I'm Jasmine, a friend of John's and also a scientist. How many of you think a smart straw that can filter water is a cool idea? I'll let her go. It's too late now. Most people don't know this, but there can be dangerous chemicals like lead in public water systems. Don't you want to know what you're drinking? (laughs) I know I do. Jean-Claude, film me. She stands there waiting to be filmed like I'm her personal videographer. 
Okay, I'll indulge her. I lift up my phone and continue recording. Hey, everybody. Aren't you tired of our government poisoning you through neglect? They think we're stupid, that we'll just take it. Well, what if I told you I'm offering you all a way to take your power back with something so small and elegant it could fit in your back pocket? You can control your own health, your own future. Send Jean Claude a DM with a thumbs up if this is something you want to see. She winks at the camera and I instinctively stop the video. I can't believe you did that. Tell me when you start getting DMs. Trust me, it's going to go viral. I check my phone. There's no response to her post. Didn't work. Just give it a sec. When I check my phone again, I can see I have a couple of DMs. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Dozens of DMs start to pour in. And every single one of them has one simple message. A big thumbs up. Jasmine has an even bigger smile on her face. So, what do you say now? I say, it looks like you found yourself a partner. Jasmine jumps up and hugs me. Her enthusiasm is something I haven't felt in a long time. It's infectious. I really am excited. But my excitement quickly shifts to another emotion. Dread. Because there's just one problem looming over my head. How on earth are we going to fund this thing? Jasmine's been silently looking out the passenger side window for the last 10 minutes, ever since she asked me to give her a ride. From the nervous look in her eyes, she seems like she's having second thoughts about going into business with me. Hey, uh, I don't know you on a personal level, but I gotta ask. You all right? Oh, I'm just thinking. Gotta figure out some stuff. Jasmine goes back to looking out the car window. Okay. Not for nothing, but should I be worried that you're having cold feet? No, no, no. It's not that at all. It's just... I gotta leave Howard to start this business, and I haven't figured out my living situation yet. Are you telling me you don't have anywhere to go? Well, that's not wrong. <laughs> Actually... I can see in your videos you have all these different apartments in the city. Maybe I can stay at one of your places for a while. I promise I'll pay rent once we get our first round of funding. My sister Elaine would be happy to know that my Instagram image of being a baller is working, but those apartments aren't mine. My friend is the manager of a condo franchise, and he slipped me the keys to a couple to record my videos. Those, uh, those are all occupied. <sighs> I lose my dorm next week. I don't have anywhere to go. Judging by all these messages on Instagram, Jasmine's pure tea straw is my best opportunity to get something going. It's way more marketable than my apps, and she has charisma to spare. I can already see her face on the cover of Entrepreneur Magazine. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but you can stay at my apartment. Uh, what? I'm, I'm not down for... No, no. I, I mean, on the couch. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, no, I, thought I, never... when you, I thought you were <laughs> like trying to... That. No, make that's, it... oh, that's I'm crazy. I just... <laughs> my place is only a couple of minutes from here. Take a quick look, and if you're cool with it, then great. If not, hey, it's up to you. Except now, this has to work, or this girl will end up sleeping on the street. And my chance to take this unicorn to investors will be gone. The silence in the elevator reminds me how little we know about each other. I mean, I've only met her twice. She's practically a stranger. I know this is asking a lot. Thank you. Sure. I mean, you would do the same, right? Oh. Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm 409 on the left. I steer her down a stark gray hallway my real estate broker described as modern minimalism. I'm pretty sure that was just a fancy way of saying that they're not going to decorate much. There's a big yellow piece of paper taped to my apartment door. I speed read the top and quickly rip it off just before Jasmine sees what it says. What was that? Oh, just another takeout menu. Jasmine walks in first and goes straight into my living room. She looks around the place and smiles. Mmm, cute place. Nice neighborhood, too. Uh, can we go tomorrow morning to get some of my stuff? You know, I think this is going to work. It'll be much easier to collaborate this way. Which, of course, is a lie. Because how could any of this be easy when the yellow piece of paper that I ripped off my door is an eviction notice? If you like our show, please give us a five-star rating and a review. And be sure to tell your friends. Follow True Love on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or wherever you're listening right now. The next episode will be out in a week, or you can listen to it ad-free right now by subscribing to Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts or the Wondery app. Another way you can support the show is by filling out a small survey at Wondery.com survey. This is episode one of our four-part series, Dirty Water. This episode is dedicated to Jean-Claude and Guy Arbway. 
I'm Justin Walker White. And I'm Amber Rashawn Williams. Chandler Owens wrote this story. Our associate producer is Brian White. Sound design is by Aaron May. Additional audio assistance by Adrian Tapia. Casting by Kate Geller. Rachel B. Doyle is our senior editor. Kevin Arbre is our showrunner, and our senior producer is Sochi Dorsey. Our executive producers are Stephanie Jens and Marshall Louis for Wondery. Wondery.